Hello, everyone. Um, welcome to the live stream. Uh, if you can hear me, I really quickly want to make sure. Hello, welcome to the live stream. Um, I want to make sure that you can hear me. So please just tell me in the comments if, if the audio is working, if everything's good, um, if the camera is clear, because last time we had some problems with that. So I want to make sure that the camera looks good. Is everything good? OK, I hope it's good. <laughs> um, well, welcome. So clapping clap to make sure. Um, welcome to the video. So today I really want to answer as many questions as I can that you guys have. Do a little Q&A thing at the end here. Um, but before that, I want to unbox July 2016's edition of Smuggler's Bounty by Funko. Um, and here it is, Jabba's Palace. So I'm excited to unbox this and um, just see, what, see what, uh, what's in store for us there. Last week, or not last week, a couple months ago, the last edition of this box, um, I got really cool figures actually they, it was the bounty hunter edition and i got uh, ig88 and boba fett on his uh, rocket firing jetpacks so um if you guys want to go check that out you can go look at the channel and there are uh, there's a you should you should be able to find it there the live stream it looks like the thumbnail very similar to this one but with red text instead of blue um all right so i just want to get into uh, unboxing this so that we can answer all your questions i don't have too much time i'm gonna i'm gonna try to keep this live stream about an hour long um, this should only take a few minutes, and then we'll get into the questions. So, here we go. Star Wars, Jabba the Hutt. Very cool. Smuggler's Bounty all along the sides, as usual. Let's open this up. Okay, we're in. Here we go. Ooh. Very cool. Okay, so it looks like the patch, because there's always a patch and a pin at, at, with these things. Um, at the top, it says, Behold your share of Smuggler's Bounty, as usual. And the patch is... Bausch, and it has, or Boosh, however you want to pronounce it, and it's uh, Smuggler's Bounty Jabba's Palace with uh, Leia in Bounty Hunter gear, in case you don't know what that is. Um, and then the pin is a Gamorrean Guard, if we have to turn it sideways. That's pretty awesome. And like I say every time that I've been unboxing these, the um, text, the fact that they use Orbesh actually in the uh, Smuggler's Bounty logo on the pins and the patches really makes them more unique and very cool to the Star Wars universe. Um, it's just a really, really nice addition, and that's all I really have to say about those. Let's get into actually opening up the box part. Here we go. Okay, let's see. I don't want to look too closely. This is a, okay, this is actually a piece of paper that says what's in the box. Um, ooh, looks like next month's is going to be Death Star? That's exciting. That's very exciting, but I don't want to look at the back because I think it says what's inside the box. Um, so here we go. I'm going to try to reach in without revealing too much. It doesn't feel like there's a t-shirt this time. No way! Wow, that's so awesome! This is actually really cool. So in case you don't know, um, I'm a C-3PO focus collector. I try to collect stuff, as much stuff uh, 3PO worth. Uh, I noticed you, Star Nerd, actually. So you're going to have to give me five bucks. Sorry. Um, but So I collect as much 3PO stuff as I can. So actually having a C-3PO pop hat that's so cool. Programmed for etiquette. That is an awesome hat. I, I probably won't wear this. I don't really wear um, baseball caps. But no, that's a really awesome hat, and it'll, it will go in the collection. I mean, it fits. <laughs> um, but I don't know. <laughs> that's so cool, though. It's C-3PO. This is, this is perfect. Um, let's see what else is in the box. I'm going to take, take this off. Um, let's see what else is in the box. I'll show everything at the end once I've taken everything out. I'll show everything once again at the end. So, let's see what else. Wow! They're giving us stuff that we've never seen before. We have a, uh, a plush little kind of Beanie Baby type thing, um, Boba Fett. That's awesome. I don't know what I'm going to do with that, but that is really cool. Um, so, a hat and Boba Fett to go with the bounty hunters like last time. Whew, now into the big stuff. Let's see. Well, we have two boxes here. One doesn't... Oh, no way! Wow! Wow! Okay, um, if you saw the... I think it was the second box. It might have been the third box. But one of the boxes actually had, um, instead of a, a Funko Pop, um, they had a mug. And it was a C-3PO mug with a red handle for his red arm. I, it was amazing. Um, looks like they have a Jabba the Hutt version, too. That's really cool. That's, that's going to look really nicely with this one, too. That's so cool, and I think they have a lot more of these at their store, that, which you can buy, but this is a, uh, I'm, I think this is a uh, Smuggler's Bounty exclusive. But uh, that's awesome. That's really great. Check that out. So we have a mug, a hat, 
and a plush doll. Um, what about the Funko Pop? What Funko Pop do they have? Wow. Wow. Look at this. I didn't have an R2-D2 before this. This is great. He has his serving, like the little drinks on him. That's so cool. There's the side. It has R2-D2, Jabba's Palace version with the, uh, with the drinks. There's the front. You can see. I'll take him out of the package in a second. There it is. Wow. That's great. Um, I'm going to adjust the mic really quickly. You guys can tell me, is everything, everything sounding good, Mike? I just want to make sure that everything is up to par here. Is this good? Okay. No, but this is awesome. Yes, bar 2D2. I like that. Um, that's, that's very, very cool. So that's going to be a great addition. I, I have like three or four protocol droids, but I didn't have an R2-D2. So this is great. Um, I'm going to, I'll try to take it out of the box. I want to be careful with the boxes. Um, ripping the box would be unfortunate. Ooh, okay. But I want to show you guys what he looks like out of the packaging. Okay. There you go. Very cool. That's great. Look at that. You have the thing at the top. Does it spin? It doesn't spin. I, I used to have a uh, Galactic Hero. I probably still have it somewhere, but a Galactic Hero um, that that used to spin around and stuff. The, this little thing on top would spin around. You could choose the drink. But that's a great figure. I'm really excited about this one. He's a little dirty. Jabba's Palace. That's great. That's going to go right uh, nicely with the rest of the shelf. I'm going to put this down to the side and make sure there's nothing left in there um, so it doesn't get in the way. Um, but no, that's great. So we have that. And then the Boba Fett. The cap with C-3PO on it. And finally, this Jabba mug. Let's take him out and see what's inside here. Not like it's much of a surprise. Okay. Ooh, there it is. Carefully. I, wanna, I don't want to destroy the box or anything. Wow, that's amazing. That paint job is probably even better than the C-3PO. Um, wow, this is a good sculpt. This will, I probably won't drink out of this, um, but, I mean, you're welcome to. Um, I probably won't be drinking out of this, though. He'll probably go over there with the 3PO, but that's awesome. That's very cool. Someone says that there is a error on the uh, R2-D2 packaging. I don't see an error. It looks like uh, R2-D2, Jabba's skiff. Um, no, but that's awesome. I'm, this is a really, this is probably the most unique pack that they've had, um, giving us a hat and a, a plush toy instead of a, instead of a t-shirt. But that's great. They're mixing it up. I like it. I like it. It's very cool. Um, if you want to order your own uh, box of Smuggler's Bounty, it won't have the exact same contents that you saw today, but you can go over to uh, smuggler bo smugglersbounty.com and uh, go check out. And, uh, you know, this is really cool. It, it ships to, uh, I think, America and Canada. I'm sorry if you're in the rest of the world, but um, you could probably pick this up on eBay or something. Um, but th these, these are a really, really nice... Um, really nice boxes with just fun stuff. It's, it's, it's really just for fun. Um, and that's what I like about the Smuggler's Bounty. I want to make sure that this audio... Tell me if... Uh, I switched over to the built-in... There. I switched over to the built-in audio. It's not going to be as professional... or It's not supposed to be as professional um, as the microphone. But is it better now? I want to make sure that it's better now. Is it worse? Way better? Way better or way worse? I'm hearing two different things. Better, okay. I'm going to keep it like this then. Um, you know, the, this microphone is supposed to be much nicer, but uh, it can have a lot of issues uh, with live streaming for some reason, which is not, which is not good. But um, I want to get into the questions now, but before I do that, I really quickly want to mention on top of Smuggler's Bounty, they also sent me a DC version of the same thing, a DC collector's box. I don't know how many DC fans are out there um, in this audience at least. But uh, this is the Suicide Squad edition, and if we open it up really quickly, I'm, I'm not, I'm, I'm not going to be as careful with this one. Uh, I don't really collect DC stuff, but uh, I want to quickly show it to you just because they sent it to me, which is very nice. Um, you have Suicide Squad patch and a... Uh, de what does that say? What's his name? Deadshot, a Deadshot pin. 
That's very cool. And if we open it up, we have a little catalog, a uh, exclusive comic cover to Smuggler's Bounty, a Suicide Squad t-shirt, um, Enchantress, the Enchantress, uh, Suicide Squad pop there, and we also have a Joker and a Harley Quinn um, action figure set there. But very cool. Thank you again, Funko, for sending me all this stuff. This is very exciting, and I'm glad that I got to unbox it today for you. Um, so now, uh, what I want to do is just take any questions um, that you guys have. So I'm uh, I'm ready, open for questions. I'm just going to put stuff to the side here. All right, I'm ready to go for any questions. Um, okay, let's see. Hello, everyone who's saying hello. Uh, Hey, Stargeek, could you reveal the topic of your next top 10 list, says Dante the House Freak. Uh, I actually, here, let me check my schedule. Let's see, the next top 10 should be the best Phantom Menace scenes. We're going to talk about Phantom Menace, um, the best scenes that they have in that movie. Uh, it was actually kind of hard to compile that list uh, because uh, the, the scenes at the end, like 10, 9, and 8, um, are kind of okay scenes, if not just not the worst scenes. So uh, we'll see how that works. But, um, uh, you know, that's... Uh, Phantom Menace is, is, is it's a good, it's, it's fun. It'll be fun to talk about the top 10 scenes from the Phantom Menace. But um, Frim on a Frim Fram says, the R2 pop errors that should say sailed barge, because he was never on the skiff. You're right. Um, that is an error. Uh, he was never on the skiff. He was on the barge the whole time. Um, all right, let's see. Dante the House Freak also asks, also, what do you think of Benicio Del Toro being in Star Wars Episode Eight and Mads Mikkelsen in Rogue One? Both are two of my favorite James Bond actors. Um, I think both are going to be really, really great in uh, in Rogue One and Episode Eight. Um, I'm, I'm really excited about Del Toro's uh, character. I'm not sure who he's going to play. I think they've talked about it. I just haven't really been keeping up with Episode Eight news because... Um, when I kept up with episode seven news, I kind of was giving the whole movie away to myself. So I've been kind of a little bit further away, a little more, um, you know, I haven't been paying attention as much to episode eight uh, leaks or spoilers or anything because I want to keep I want to keep the movie experience fresh. Um, so I I'm just really excited. They're good. They're both really good actors. Uh, Mads Mikkelsen I think is playing. Um, uh, it's Jin Erso's dad, isn't it? She, he's an inventor, and he invents something, probably something really vital to the Death Star, uh, something important there. He's going to be a great character, I think, too. And um, uh, Lars Mikkelsen is voice acting for Tarkin, I think, in uh, Rebels. So that's all cool stuff. Favorite The Clone Wars episode? Um, my favorite Clone Wars episode is probably... Uh, the Wrong Jedi, which is the last episode in Season 5 where Ahsoka Tano... I don't want to spoil anything, but it's Ahsoka Tano, basically, episode. Um, I used to really hate her character, but as it got into, like, Season 3 and 5, 4 and 5, um, she really became, one, like, a fan favorite for basically everyone, and she became... Uh, she, she stopped being just an annoying side character who was just kind of there uh, into a character who could actually have a presence on screen, and I thought she ended up in the end being very good, but The Wrong Jedi, if you haven't seen it, if you haven't seen The Clone Wars, um, you just have to get through season one and two, and the rest will be amazing, so definitely check that out. Do you have any LEGO Star Wars sets? I'm going to tilt the camera up, because here we have um, a, ooh, what is this? This is uh, the, so I think there's something special. It's like the ultimate, ultimate uh, X-Wing, which I picked up somewhere. Uh, the Lego Death Star set, and the Ewok Village. Um, I don't think I have any more out. I have Technics, which are the, um, the uh, they're kind of like figures. You know what Technics are if you're, if you're into Legos, but uh, they're cool. I probably can spin around. The Technics uh, up here, yeah, I have like most of the characters. Um, but no, I mean, I have a bunch of Lego sets boxed up um, or put away. Uh, I just haven't been getting into Lego recently with The Force Awakens coming out. I haven't really done anything with that. Um, just because I, I, I don't have a lot of room to put up Lego sets because they're big or they're too small to really display well. Um, so, but no, I, lo I love Legos. Legos are great. Um, let's see. What's your next top 10 vid? Top 10 Phantom Menace scenes, like I said. Do you like superheroes? Um, superheroes aren't really my... I'm not really interested in superheroes. I'm not... 
I'm not even that interested into other star, uh, other sci-fi things like Star Trek. Um, I really loved, liked Guardians of the Galaxy, uh, which was basically just uh, Star Wars version two. And um, yeah, I mean, oh, almost dropped the computer there. That would be bad. Um, I mean, superheroes I've never really been that interested in. Uh, Spider Man is okay. I really like Iron Man actually, and the new the new uh, Captain America movie. Uh, Civil War was amazing. I loved that movie. It's probably one of my favorite movies of all time, actually. Um, and it's a superhero movie, so, I mean, uh, you never know. Superhero movies can be good, but most of the time, I'm not that interested. All right, let's see. Whoa. Uh, sorry, I just jumped down. I've been re doing questions from up above. Do you like Star Wars Rebels? Um, yeah, I really do. I, the first season, if you get through the first half of the first season, it's kind of like Clone Wars. If you get through the first half of the first season... Um, I think it'll pick up and you'll actually start to get interested in the series as a whole. Um, the characters become more developed, the whole storyline in general is better. It's just, it's just really, I'm trying to adjust, I keep trying to adjust the uh, webcam here, sorry about that. Um, no, it's really just like, it became an amazing show. And I think with, with the new additions of Thrawn and all these other characters that they're introducing, um, it's going to really pick up and it's going to be like Clone Wars where it gets better and better and better after each season. So I'm excited about Rebels and uh, I think it's great. Okay, let's see. Do you think Palpatine is Rey's father? I've done a video about uh, who I think Rey's uh, family is, but uh, honestly, I don't even know if I'm right in that video. Uh, I'd rather just have her not be related to anyone, I guess. But um, no, I don't, I don't think Palpatine is related to Rey in any way. Will we ever see a Knights of the Old Republic standalone film? I don't... Uh, well, we might. I think it would be really cool to see that time period. Um, I never really got into it. I, the video game is great, um, but this, the timeline for me just wasn't really, really my version of Star Wars that I'm used to. I like the original trilogy and uh, a little bit in between the prequel trilogy uh, timeline, uh, and anything before that I never really got into. But um, but no, I think it would be great if they actually went back and went way back in time or way ahead in time and uh, looked at different time periods in the Star Wars universe. They have lots of things that they could look at now. So that's great. Um, have you ever personally met any Star Wars celebrities? I think that said it jumped away. Um, but have you ever met... Anyways, that's the question that I read. Uh, yes, I have met celebrities. I've met Anthony Daniels, uh, Peter Mayhew, Billy Dee Williams. Um, let's see. Uh, Tim Rose, who was Admiral Akbar, um, the guy in the costume, and a puppeteer for lots of different puppets like uh, Salacious Crumb and Sice Noodles, um, before she became a CGI character who like throws her mouth at the camera. Um, and Ahsoka Tano, uh, Ashley Eckstein, I met her too. Um, I met Ahso uh, Ashley Eckstein at Emerald City Comic Con this year. Tim Rose, Peter Mayhew uh, at uh, Celebration 2015, Anaheim. And then Anthony Daniels I met at the EMP um, in Seattle. Uh, I met him at Emerald City Comic Con in 2015, which is where I got autographs for him. And then I also met him at uh, Celebration 2015. And then Billy Dee Williams was the first Star Wars celebrity I met, um, also at the EMP, but I didn't really talk to him then. So I guess uh, Anthony Daniels was really the first one. But Billy Dee Williams was the first autograph that I got. Um, and Billy Dee Williams was, uh, no, he was a really cool guy. He was at Scarecrow Video in Seattle, and he was just signing autographs and... Uh, that was a lot of fun. He, it was th these uh, the celebrities that I've met all have been positive experiences. They're all really nice, um, really great to talk to. If you ever get the chance to go to celebration or something and meet up with these guys, um, no, it's really it's really fun. It's great. All right, let's see. Uh, hey, Star Geek, I'm a huge fan and I watch your videos all the time. Thank you, the Zing Zongs. Um, I'd like to know what your favorite Smuggler's Bounty box is. Also, there's an error on the Jabba mug box. It says Hut, not Hut. Does it really? Wow, that's right, Jabba the Hutt, one T. Which, if you actually, uh, if you actually look back at the Marvel timeline, um, when the original Marvel comic books were coming out in the '70s and the '80s, um, Jabba the Hutt, before we knew who he was, they took a guy named uh, Moset Benid, which I'll actually grab one second. It's gonna, I just gotta <laughs> grab this. So in the original Marvel uh, timeline with the comic books that came out in the 70s, uh, they had to have someone for Jabba the Hutt because they wanted to put that scene in the comic book, but they had deleted it in the original cut of A New Hope, so, or Star Wars as it was called back then. Um, so they just took a background character uh, from the cantina or from uh, Mos Eisley 
and they made him um, Mosep Benid, and that's what Jabba the Hutt looks like in the original comic books, um, and they spelled his name with one T. So the one T Jabba the Hutt uh, works for that, but um, it's interesting. It's interesting seeing uh, seeing that they make such a big spelling error on something this big. That's interesting. Wow. Thanks for pointing that out. Um, wow. I, that, <laughs> I just think that's crazy. I may I have a whole nitpicking series. If you have seen the nitpicking series and you're taking it too seriously, I don't actually really care how you pronounce uh, Tanta V4. Um, which I didn't know was pronounced Tanta V4. I don't even like Tanta V4 that much. I'd rather have Tantiv or Tantiv or Tantiv. Um, but no, Tanta V4. Uh, I don't care if you pronounce Nien Nub's name, Nine Num, which is actually how it's supposed to be pronounced. I'm just used to pronouncing it Nien Nub. Um, but yeah, I mean, uh, don't take that too seriously. Those are the correct ways. There are a, a few different, uh, like Jabba. Some people say Jabba. It, it really depends where you are in the world. Um, in America, I keep using the air quotes for no reason. In America, um, we're supposed to say, or we're not supposed to say anything because it's a fictitious character, um, but Jabba the Hutt is usually how you pronounce it. Same with Han Solo. The way that I uh, determine how you pronounce a character's name, this is really going <laughs> going uh, so far away from the comment, which was just about the the spelling on the, the, the case here, but... Um, if you if you want to know how to pronounce a character's name, just listen to how they say it. Uh, if they say it different ways, just choose your favorite one or how other characters say it. Um, but really, Han Solo, he says Han Solo, so it's Han Solo. Uh, you know, things like that. Leia is Leia. Um, it's it's, it's kind of simple. Uh, at least that's how I see it. You can do whatever you want. It's all good, right? It's just it's just a movie. All right. Favorite pizza topping? Uh, pepperoni. Kind of boring, but just pepperoni, I think, is is all you really need on a pizza. Um, Clone Wars or Rebels? Clone Wars is much better. <laughs> uh, it, the animation, the story, everything about it is just, its it feels more, uh, they put a lot more effort into it. Well, I don't want to say that. They put a lot of effort into Rebels. It's clear. They have a bunch of connections. Um, the storyline is great. Uh, but I feel like Clone Wars just has, you can feel that they actually tried really hard. They were super passionate about it. Um, and Rebels is kind of, uh, mixing it up a little bit. I think their their budget was cut from Clone Wars, and now they're getting that budget back because you can see the animation and the style getting better and better after each season. But no, Clone Wars. Uh, I just like. I just prefer Clone Wars. I think it's a better series. Uh, the characters are more developed, and uh, yeah, I think basically everything is a uh, is better. Favorite Rebels episode. Ooh, um, favorite Rebels episode. That's a tough one. That's a really tough one. Um. It's probably the last episode in season two, the Vader and Ahsoka fight. Um, I don't know. That's really tough, though. But I'll, I'll say that for now. Uh, all right. Let's see. Do you like Harry Potter? Um, Harry Potter. Yeah. I mean, I, I read the books, I, at least most of them. I think I got to, like, the seventh book or something. Or no, uh, the sixth book. And I, did, I didn't finish the series. I don't think. I might have, though. Um, I can't really remember. The movies I really like, but I haven't watched them in a long time, so I can't I can't really say for sure. Um, but no, Harry Potter is great. I mean, most things are most things in the geeky universe are great. In fact, actually, I'm going to be doing a um, tomorrow's or I don't know if it's going to come out tomorrow, but the next episode that's coming out very very soon is uh, Star Wars news, talking about all the sorts of things that have been happy happening lately in the Star Wars universe. Um, but I also want to do right after that uh, Star Trek versus Star Wars, my opinion on that, my view on that, and how I see that. Um, so there you go, because the next question is Kirk or Picard. I have no, no preference at all. I don't, I think I know the two characters. I think Captain Kirk is William Shatner, right? And Picard is, uh, the other guy. <laughs> oh, what's his name? You know, who, what's the, uh, who's Picard? Who plays Picard? You guys would know. Someone knows. Someone tell me, please. I want to know. But before that, um... Okay, who's your favorite character in the Clone Wars? Uh, my favorite character in the Clone Wars is, um, ooh, I don't know. I don't really have a favorite character. They have a lot of different characters. Patrick Stewart, thank you. Sorry, that's Picard, Patrick Stewart. Um, also, uh, Professor X, right, in the X-Men. Um, but, right, Patrick Stewart, very cool. So, um, let's see. Uh, where were we? We were talking about something. I was trying to answer a question. Uh, favorite character in the Clone Wars. I don't really have a favorite character. I think uh, the clones are really cool. Um, 
I think it has to be the clones in general. Uh, I think the voice actor, uh, uh, Baker, it's D Baker something, something D Baker, um, does a really great job with the clone voices, and uh, Captain Rex is a great character too. So I, I don't know, all the all the clones are great. Okay, let's see. Uh, did you know that in the Italian translation they changed some names? For example, C-3PO is D-3BO, and that applies only on the OT. That's weird. Um, I think that in France they had it changed to like Z-3PO or something, um, and Dark Vador or Dark something, and they changed all the names. Um, I don't really know why they would change it for like C-3PO, which is just numbers and letters. Um, but, you know, I think it's cool. It makes it unique. So if you go to Italy, you're like, oh, it's D3BO. You know who it is. Um, it gives it something something special. All right, let's see. Um, let me see. Least favorite character. Uh, I shouldn't have even brought that one up. Um, uh, least favorite character is... Oh, I made a video on this, and I said it was Baby Boba Fett. Um, the Boba Fett, young Boba Fett, played by Daniel Logan. Um, but I don't know. He doesn't really deserve it. I just never really. I thought he was kind of put in there just for fan service, and it was just kind of a boring character. And I thought it just didn't seem like it fit. Um, after the Clone Wars, it seemed like his character fit more. So that kind of tossed up that list. And the whole list is basically a waste of time. Um, it's basically just saying, oh, this character because he's annoying or something. Uh, Watto's on there, and Watto's actually a pretty great character if you think about it. He plays a, he's a good for what they serve. They're good for what they serve. New Gunray is good for what he serves. Uh, the complaints I have don't really fit, so that video is kind of outdated. I might make a new one. Um, for all of you talking about Clone Wars, because there's been a lot of that, um, my Clone Wars video is not on the channel anymore, but I am planning to re-upload a, a completely redone version of the same video, so uh, just hold out for that because uh, I want to make sure that I have that video out there for you guys to enjoy. Okay. Uh, what is your rumor on the... Uh, what is your opinion on the rumor of Grand Admiral Thrawn being in Episode 8? Just want to say that you're awesome and you're one of my favorite Star Wars channels. Thank you! Oh, gosh, I don't know how to pronounce your name. Uh, f uh, Fop... Foppy... Conan? Conan? Fop... Conan? Fop... Uh, I don't... You can tell me how to pronounce your name. But, um... No, uh, I, I know that people are thinking that Grand Admiral Thrawn might make his way in Episode Eight. Um, I think that since he's been introduced in Rebels, now that he's in canon, it's a possibility he could make it into one of the movies. Uh, is it going to be Episode Eight? I don't think so. I don't think he's going to be in Episode Eight or Nine. Um, I think they're going to keep him in uh, Rebels for now. For now, they're just going to keep him in Rebels and... Uh, and see how that works out. Because I think he's been really well received just from the few seconds he's been in the trailer, but we haven't actually seen him in action in the show. So we don't really know anything about him I, uh, other than what we know from the Expanded Universe. We can't assume that they're going to take everything from the Expanded Universe. So really, we don't know anything about Thrawn. Um, it seems like they're keeping his personality the same with the artistic style and the, the sophistication. Um, but no, we don't really know enough to determine that now. I don't see him making it in Episode 8. I think it would be really cool if he made it... Uh, I, I thought it would have been awesome if he was in Rogue One. Um, but they can always put him in a, a different movie somehow. Maybe the Han Solo movie, he'll make a cameo. He, it would seem kind of out of place, but you never know. There are lots of different places where they could put him in there. So, all right, let's see. Um, Stargeek, have you seen Hello Greedo's face? I don't think anyone has seen Hello Greedo's face. We'll never know, people. We'll never know. All right. Uh... <laughs> who is cuter, BB-8 or R2-D2? Um, uh, ooh. Well, I think R2-D2 is better just because I, you know, I grew up with R2-D2. R2-D2 is the character that everyone loves. Um, but I don't know. BB-8 is a good one, too. Uh, cuter? Ooh, you're, that's such a tough question. I don't know how to answer that. Um, uh... I pass, pass. What do you what do you think is cuter? Whoever you think is cuter, you can tell me. Okay. Let's see. Um who is the ugliest character in Star Wars? Let's look up ugliest character in Star Wars and see if anything comes up. Cuz I know that there are a lot of ugly species that I've always thought were uh like in, in, weird that they were in the Star Wars universe. Um I mean, not weird that they were in the Star Wars universe, just they were very eye-catching in their ugliness. Um so let's check out, I'm going to put this guy back because he's everywhere. Um, ugliest Star Wars character. It's moving the camera around a lot. 
Okay. Well, yeah, there's that uh, the guy who sells or almost sells um, Jar Jar Binks the little frog thing. Um, he's like, hey, you have to pay for that. Uh, that guy's pretty ugly. Uh, the dancers at Jabba's Palace, those are all pretty ugly. Uh, what is the, ooh, what is the Snaggletooth species? Um, that guy is pretty ugly. Yeah, I don't remember what it's called. But no, there, there are a bunch of different ugly characters. But you can't judge, right? It's just, you know, don't judge the Star Wars characters. They can't help it. Okay. Um, who is better, Luke or Han? I did a versus video on this, and you guys didn't agree with me uh, at all. Um, well, it was kind of split down the middle, which makes sense. But uh, I think I like Han. I like Han. Uh, yeah, I think Han has got to be better. I I don't know if his character is better. He's just kind of you know the smuggler guy who like switches sides. Um, but no, I, I like Han Solo's character a lot. I I think that Luke is probably more powerful, all that stuff. But Han just has a special a special place. It's Han Solo. You can't beat Han Solo. Um, ex unless you're C-3PO or Darth Vader or Yoda. Or, uh, no, I think Han. Han is my fourth favorite character by, by, behind those two. Or three. Um, so, yeah. But <laughs> uh, that's, uh, that's that. You want a wanga? I don't know. Do you want a wanga? Do you want a wanga? Want a wanga? Want a wanga? wanga? All right. Um, let's see. Is the stream going weird? Like, do you mean weird because it's like, ah, uh, Owanawanga, or do you mean weird is it, is, is it glitching out? I want to make sure that nothing goes too wrong here. Um, I want to keep everything good for you. Okay. Have you seen the 2003 Clone Wars series? That's the better Clone Wars series. Um, not, not in a story-wise. Story-wise, it's not better. Artistically, the, the Clone Wars, if you haven't seen 2003 Clone Wars, it's an amazing uh, little short series of, like, three-minute episodes um, that they strung together. Um, no, it's amazing. They have a, they have a storyline. It's just, uh, it's more about the, the art, art and it's just in, in incredible to look at. It's super, super just gripping. You can't not look at it when it's on. It's just incredible. Um, anyways, that's, that, sorry, that it was, the Clone Wars 2003 is just amazing. So, um, who is your favorite character from Rogue One? Uh, Ooh, I think uh, K2SO looks like an interesting character. I, I like the droids, if you can't tell. Um, but no, K2SO, I think his his uh, comedy, his personality is going to be great. He's kind of, people have pointed this out, he kind of uh, seems like uh, Marvin. Is it Marvin? I think it's Marvin from um, ooh, uh, from Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, the, the robot. Um, I think it's Marvin. I don't know, though. Uh, and I think that's a that's great that they're bringing that type of personality into the Star Wars universe. I'm excited to see uh, Rogue One, but I don't know. Um, we'll have to just wait and see. But K2SO, he's a droid. I like all the droids. I bet I'm going to like that one, too. Do you have action figures from the 70s? Over here are some of the original Kenner action figures. Um, and we have Gary the Gonk Droid. Sorry he hasn't made an appearance in a while. I've just been a little busy to keep him in. But here's Gary the Gonk Droid right there. Um, but no, yep, so there, there are, uh, most of the Kenner figures I have. I'm trying to build that collection up, but it's not the priority right now, so there are some of the, uh, the Kenner figures. Okay, Ponda Baba or Dr. Evazon? Um, I have all, I think Ponda Baba, because he's the one who gets his arm cut off, in case you don't know, it's the, he doesn't like you, we're one of the men. Um, Ponda Baba is the one who gets his arm cut off, uh, and I dressed up as him for Halloween, um, in like, uh, ooh, probably second or third grade, maybe first grade. Uh, but no, Ponda Baba, I used to really like that character. So Ponda Baba, that's why I have, that's Ponda Baba, in case you don't know. Uh, so Walrus Man is how he was known in the uh, Kenner figure versions. Um, no, he, he's great. Okay, let's see. Um, since I brought up uh, Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, do I like it? Uh, yeah, I do. Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy is great. I really like the movie, actually. I think I saw that first, um, and then I read the books, and the books were really, really good, too. I think the movie, if you don't want to go through reading the books, which you should. They're really amazing books. If you're going to read books, Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy should be way up there. Um, but the movie kind of sums up everything the books have, because it's the books taken all the books together and put into one one movie. So... I'm sorry if people are having uh, technical issues. It looks like it's uh, like it's uh, nothing uh, too big for most people. It looks like it's just a few few people having problems. 
Have you met Hello Greedo? So here, uh, so for the Star Wars YouTubers, um, I'm going to cover all the Star Wars YouTubers here, uh, like Dash Star, uh, Geekdom101, uh, Star Wars Minute, Hello, or Star Wars Explained, Hello Greedo, uh, Chris Perillo. Um, I have met Chris Perillo because we both live in Seattle, so it's easy to meet here. Um, and there's a good big Star Wars collectors group here, which is a really great place to see collections and stuff and go out and just have fun with Star Wars people. Um, so I've met Chris Perillo a few times uh, in person. Um, and I've talked to Alex from Star Wars Explained and uh, Prince from Urban Acolytes on the Holocron Hangout streams along with Chris Perillo. Um, and uh, I've chatted with Dash Star, Hello Greedo, Geekdom 101, those people. But uh, I've never met them in person, and it would be really cool to go to Orlando and uh, actually meet up with them. It would be really, I think a really good idea would actually be to get a panel together and have us all on a panel. Um, I haven't talked to them about that or anything. It's just a, it's just an idea. Um, but it would be cool to meet everyone in person and uh, meet you guys, meet the fans. So, no, that would be great. What is your favorite Star Wars movie and why? Um, the Empire Strikes Back has always been my favorite Star Wars movie, really. Um, I like the comedy, the suspense, the action, the drama, everything about it. The visuals are amazing. The characters are the characters. I think are what really make Episode Five the best film. Um, the characterization in that movie is just the best out of all the Star Wars movies. Um, no, there's, I don't really have anything negative about that movie. Um, yeah, I, I didn't list off every every Star Wars YouTube uh, channel either that I've talked to or that that I know. Um, like Fact Free is another great one. There are lots of ones out there. I don't have time to cover all of them, um, but no, there are a lot of a lot of great channels that you should definitely go check out and subscribe to. Um, what is your least favorite movie of all time? Uh, ooh, well, I don't know. Uh, I haven't seen enough movies. I mean, I've seen obviously lots of movies. I just don't know if I could pick one off. I've seen too many movies, maybe, to choose just one least favorite. Um, now, but out of the Star Wars movies, we we can say uh, Attack of the Clones. Is probably my least favorite out of the Star Wars movies. Um, yeah, I mean, the Attack of the Clones is just too busy. It's too long. It's too boring. Um, but I mean, it, I, you can love it. I I think Attack of the Clones is is good for what it is. But no, it's probably probably my least favorite least favorite film in the saga. <laughs> okay, one second. I'm gonna. I have to take a drink of water. I haven't I haven't uh, taken a drink yet. So hang on. Ah, okay. <laughs> That's better. My throat was getting a little dry from just talking constantly. Okay. All right. Let's see. Um, if you could travel to a Star Wars convention outside of the U.S., where would you go? Love your videos, by the way. Thank you, Totally Not Nerdy. Um, so, where would I go? Uh, well, I love Canada. Canada is, a, uh, at least, especially Vancouver. That's really the main area in Canada that I've been, um, just because it's just a, like a couple hours north of here. Um, but uh, no, uh, Canada would be an easy one. Um, if you're going to go further than that, uh, probably Sweden, because I have family in Sweden, and uh, my dad and my sister are actually there right now. Um, and uh, I love going there. So Sweden would be a really great place. Or Denmark, you know, that Denmark and Sweden or Norway. I like the Scandinavian countries. Um, that would be a really great place to uh, set up a convention. Um, but Germany or London, those are also really great places, and I think Paris would be a cool one. Uh, there are a lot of different places outside of the U.S. that would, I think could really be a great place for uh, Celebration Europe or Canada. Why? I mean, why not a, a Celebration in Canada? I think that would be cool, too. So, let's see. Um, let's see. Do you think more YouTubers will get movies? With YouTube Red, um, a lot of YouTubers are getting their own, like, movies on YouTube. Uh... I don't think it's going to go much farther than that, but I mean, if you have enough money and you have enough time and you want to make a movie, you probably can as a big enough YouTuber. So, I mean, I, I don't really have much to say about that. Australia. Sorry. Australia would be another great place. There are more than just the places that I listed, but Australia, I think there are a heavy enough concentration of fans there uh, to have a really nice, a really nice uh, celebration in Sydney or something like that. That'd be great. Okay. Thanks for joining, Star Killer Dude. Goodbye. <laughs> not not goodbye, everyone. It's just some people are leaving the chat. R two or the pink R two. Um, uh, the pink R two. Uh, I think I know who you're talking about. Um, I think it's uh R two KT. Um, R two KT was dedicated actually after a little girl. Um, 
And uh, the the I I mean I can't really choose. She doesn't really have R two K T doesn't really have a big role um, in the in the Star Wars film. So um, probably just you know there if got a better if it got a bigger role it would probably be higher up. But I mean R two D two is R two D two. It's you can't compete with R two D two. Where is Star Wars collectors? Where are the Star Wars collectors in Seattle? Um, there's a Seattle group called Sarlacc Seattle Area Lucasfilm Artifact Collectors Club, and uh, no, it's really great. Uh, it's one of the best group of people that I've ever um, been in. No, Sarlacc is really, really great. Um, and I want to do a video about our trip. We went to uh, the Southern Dunes, uh, or the Dunes of Southern California um, in Buttercup Valley, the Imperial Dunes, uh, and we went to the f uh, filming location of the Sarlacc pit, and we picked up some pieces there um, that I, I want to kind of show off in a video and talk about that experience. I think that would be great. Okay. I'm going to be on for another 20 minutes, probably a little less. Probably I'll give it like 15 more minutes. So uh, if you have any more questions, please just make sure that you uh, send them out. So we're, we're almost uh, wrapping up here. But until then, uh, we have another 15 minutes. Okay. Let's see. Um, happy birthday, Beast Boy Gaming Vids. Uh, all right. Marvel, not including Star Wars or DC. Okay. Uh, so I don't really have an opinion because I don't really read comic books. Unless it's Star Wars, um, so the not including Star Wars in parentheses kind of threw it all off. Um, if it's Marvel Star Wars or Dark Horse Star Wars, uh, it would be Marvel Star Wars. I really like Dark Horse's Droids series. Um, I think that's really good. But overall, Dark Horse I never really got into. Um, while Marvel, I think that whether it's the '70s and the '80s versions or the 2015 to 2016 versions that they've been coming out with lately. Um, it's all really great. Marvel is puts out really great content, so I'd be excited to see more of that. All right, let's see. Favorite Jedi. Um, my favorite Jedi. Yoda. I mean, it has to be Yoda. Um, on my top ten Jedi list, I put Luke because uh, there are different reasons that the top ten lists get different than some of the opinion videos. Um, lately, I've just been doing my own opinion and kind of doing like, who do I like the most? Oh, if it's Yoda, Yoda would have gotten the number one spot nowadays. Um, but when I made that list, um, Luke got the number one spot, so don't let that throw you off. Yoda is my favorite uh, character uh, in the Jedi, so it has to be Yoda. All right. Let's see. Do you like uh, the Freemaker Adventures, the Lego series? Um, I haven't I haven't uh, seen it yet, actually. I, I don't know if it's out yet. I haven't been really keeping up. Um, I, I, think it, I think it'll turn out okay. I think people are having pretty co uh, positive reviews of it. But, um, no, I haven't really been keeping up with that, so I can't say much about that. I, I don't, I'm not really uh, huge on the concept. I don't, I'm not super into it, but um, I can't, I haven't seen it, so I can't really say much about it. Okay, who's your favorite Star Wars director? Irving Kirshner, I think, did an amazing job with the characterization in Episode Five, which is probably why uh, Empire Strikes Back is my favorite film. So uh, it has to be Irving Kirshner, but George Lucas... I mean, George, George Lucas did ever. He's like Star Wars. George Lucas is Star Wars. So I mean, probably George as a as a Star Wars director, Irving Kirshner. As a Star Wars person, um, George Lucas would have to be have to take that spot. Um, okay. Um, how come your TFA ranking has moved since December? Because I've talked about uh, my order of my favorite movies, um, and I, I think I did this the last live stream too. But if, I'm gonna. Top of the screen is my favorite film. Bottom of the screen is my least favorite film in the Star Wars uh, saga. So, and, and it's spaced apart uh, accordingly. So, up here is like Empire Strikes Back, and then I want to keep it flat. Empire Strikes Back, and then like A New Hope, Return of the Jedi, Force Awakens, uh, Revenge of the Sith, Phantom Menace, Attack of the Clones. And the reason The Force Awakens moved down is because I, I got it on DVD and Blu-ray. Um, and when you really look through the movies and you re and you like rewatch them all uh i just think that the the original trilogy just has more charm to it and and i think the force awakens was uh forcing a little bit too much on the the nostalgia factor and uh shoving all the stuff that they could in from the other movies um force awakens was an amazing movie it's one of the it's one of the greatest movies of all time i love that movie uh but no it's i think it's got to be the original trilogy before before the force awakens but that's just my opinion. Uh, favorite food. I don't really have a favorite food. Um, I can't really say much about that. 
What is the best choreographed lightsaber fight in your opinion? My favorite lightsaber fight is the one where Darth Vader reveals that he's Luke's father on Bespin. Um, I feel like they had, that one had the most emotion in it. Um, was it the best choreographed? I, I mean, it depends on how you look at best choreographed, because uh, choreography in the lightsaber fights can either be really flashy and exciting and fun and uh, energetic, or it can be emotional and impactful. Um, and the emotional impactful stuff was better in the original trilogy, with a few exceptions, obviously. Um, and the flashy, jumpy choreography was better in um, the prequels. The final battle between Obi-Wan and Anakin, I think, was actually really good. It had a lot of emotion and stuff. But uh, I guess that's the best choreographed one. Um, you just don't feel it as much when you're, when you're seeing basically people dance and they're going so quickly that you can't really keep up with it. Um, I, I feel like the, you can really feel uh, The Empire Strikes Back when they're, when they're battling on Bespin. But that's just, that's just what I think. Um, okay. Um... Least favorite lightsaber. Uh, least favorite lightsaber. Uh, <laughs> um, that's an interesting question. I I don't really have a least favorite lightsaber. It would probably be one of the weirder ones, like uh, the lightsaber. Uh, I guess, no, I, I don't have a least favorite lightsaber. My favorite lightsaber, though, um, is Obi-Wan Kenobi's. I just think it looks the best. Uh, but, yeah, I don't have a least favorite lightsaber. I'm sorry. Um, can't say much about that. All right. Um, what do you think of The Godfather? I keep trying to watch The Godfather. I haven't seen it yet. Um, so maybe, maybe I'll see it and suddenly it's like, Godfather is amazing. Oh, forget Star Wars and this whole room will just be demolished. <laughs> um, but no, I, I'm excited to see Godfather. I just haven't found the time. Um, I'll be watching it soon though. So, no, that'll be good. Uh, all right. What is the most underrated part of Star Wars? Uh, I think the characters... I, I, I think the characters in Star Wars are really what make the movies so great, which is why I have so many characters up and around and less vehicles and things. Um, but no, I, people say that the acting uh, can, can be a little wooden and not that great, but I think the acting in the movies is actually amazing. Um, it, there are parts where it's clear that they, it wasn't the best that they could have done, or maybe it was the best they could have done, but it wasn't the best acting. Um, but I think that, no, I think especially in The Empire Strikes Back, like I've been saying, the emotion that they put into the movie um, makes the characters what, what is so great about Star Wars. The, without the characters, Star Wars is basically nothing. So um, I think the characters are the most underrated part of Star Wars. How do you juggle video editing and school? So in the summer, you, you pointed this out, but in the summer I don't have to juggle that. Um, with video editing and school, so the video process, I have a whole video on how I make a... A YouTube video on here, but I have to write a script, which takes usually a day or two, depending on how much work I put into it and how short the video is. Um, so I write a script, and then I have to come up here and I have to record audio, um, which takes uh, an hour or two hours, maybe four hours. At, uh, I think the longest I took was like five hours on a really long video. Um, the audio recording is terrible. If you're not just talking, like I'm talking now, it's easy because you're just like talking into a webcam. Um, you're just saying what comes to mind. When you're reading a script, uh, you actually have to make sure that your intonation is correct, pronunciation, uh, everything that you do has to present professionally um, or depending on how you feel. Maybe you want it to feel unprofessional at certain parts for a certain reason. Um, and it just takes a long time. If you flub on one word, you have to re-record a whole paragraph because that's it sounds better when you record a paragraph at a time instead of like a sentence at a time. Um, so yeah, I don't record, I don't re like read a script and just go all the way through. Uh, I, I record in sections. If I mess, way, mess up halfway through a really long paragraph, I'll just like trim it and I'll fit it and I'll try to make it as seamless as possible to transition. Um, but usually, usually I just record in chunks, uh, paragraphs. So once I finish audio recording, I go into the video editor, which I use uh, Final Cut Pro uh, 10, Final Cut Pro 10. And um, I pop all the... I have the audio, I record in Final Cut Pro um, with its built-in audio recorder. Um, and then I edit the videos, which takes usually three days, I think, is about normal. Three or four days. Um, it, I think a few videos have taken five days, five or six days, um, but that's very few videos. So, um, no, it's mostly, it's mostly, uh, the way I juggle it is that I have to, I have to, organize my time in a way that I can 
get schoolwork done, but also work on videos at the same time in the background. Um, every time I get a free opportunity, I'm usually hopping over writing a paragraph of, of script or I'm uh, editing as much as I can in between things. Um, if we watch a movie or something or a TV show, I am not just watching the TV show or the movie. I'm going to edit at the same time or I'm going to write at the same time. Um, I'm almost always doing two things at once. That's the biggest way that I juggle. Um, yeah, it's mostly just doing two things at once. I'm always, I'm almost always writing or editing. Um, but yeah, audio recording, I just hate. Uh, it's not fun. So I don't know. We'll we'll see how that works. Um, okay. Let's see. Um, please answer echo or fives. Uh, ooh. So in case you don't I haven't seen the Clone Wars, Echo and Fives are two different clones. Um, I don't know. They're they're both really good characters. They're kind of the the same on the same level for me. Um, I made a list of my favorite Clone Wars characters. I I guess it would have to be Fives just because his character was a little more fleshed out. But uh, Echo was also a great character. So okay, I did answer Kevin. Please, I mean I I tried to answer as best as best as I could. I'm sorry if you didn't like it. Um, how do you feel about Star Trek? Uh, there's actually a Star Trek uh, exhibit at the EMP here in Seattle, um, the Experience Music Project. Uh, it's really, I'm really excited to go see that. Uh, but the movies and the TV show themselves, meh, I don't know. I'm, I, I like J.J. Abrams. The movie that everyone hated from Star Trek, I liked the most. Um, so, I don't know. I, I'm not a huge Star Trek fan. Uh, I'm not a huge uh, sci-fi fan even um i start it's basically all about star wars um and then star trek is is, is there too uh which is why i'm going to be doing the star trek versus star wars episode i don't want to give every everything away now um so there's that uh favorite planet i did a video on this my favorite planet is um ooh, my favorite planet is uh dagobah dagobah um i really like alderaan too alderaan would probably be up there, I don't, I don't remember how I listed them in that video, but Alderaan, um, looking back at it, it, there just isn't enough of it in the movies. If there was more, Alderaan would, would be a great, great uh, planet. I think they could have done so much more with it, and hopefully we see a little bit of it in um, other movies to come. So, uh, no, yeah, but... Yeah, I, I think Dagobah. I just like the environment on Dagobah. I wouldn't want to live there. I'm not saying it's the best planet, like, aesthetic-wise. Um, I just like the environment for what it is. So, that's it. If you missed the unboxing, so Imperial Yoda asks, did I miss the unboxing? Um, if you missed the unboxing, you just scroll back and watch it. It's at the beginning. It's just for the first, like, 15 minutes of the video. Um, and uh, you can watch that there. It's, like, 10 minutes long. So um, all the, once, this li once this live stream is done, it will process a little while, and then it'll be uploaded to the channel, and you can go back and watch through any part of this video that you missed. All right. Um, where do you think Star Wars will go after Episode Nine? Um, uh, I don't know. I'm guessing, knowing Disney, uh, they're going to want to, they spent four and a half billion dollars on Star Wars, so they're going to want to get as much money back as they can. Um, they're probably going to go, uh, episode 10, I need more water, one second. All right, um, they're probably going to go episode 10, 11, 12, uh, and just keep going, um, which hopefully they don't do that immediately because um, I think Ant stopping it at nine, nine films would probably the, be uh, be the best way to go for the saga. Um, but as many as many spinoff films that they want to do, uh, that'll be that'll be great. I think I think doing tons and spinoff. If I get a spinoff film every year, I'd be happy. So um, you don't need that much, but that I think that would really satisfy all the Star Wars community. Um, and they're keeping it really, really, uh, really well. So I think that Disney's doing a really good job with, uh, what they had for Star Wars. So, okay, let's see. Um, how do I feel about Count Dooku asks Vula Matter. Um, how do I feel about Count Dooku? Count Dooku, uh, I think is a, uh, he's, I think he's a good character. I think he was fleshed out much better in the Clone Wars. In the movies, he wasn't as, as interesting, um, I never really got into Count Dooku as a character that much. Um, but no, Christopher Lee is great. Um, and I think that Count Dooku, Count Dooku could have had a lot more potential. But his, his point, his purpose in the films was uh, served well. And uh, having Anakin decapitate him 
was the best way to end off Count Dooku's legacy. So, um, no, Count Dooku, great. All right. Do you like Jango Fett? Um, yeah, I mean, what I think about Jango Fett and Baby Boba Fett um, is that they were kind of they were kind of put in there as fan service. Like they were put in there as as a way to service the fans who love Boba Fett. Like George Lucas has said in audio commentaries and a bunch of other things, um, that if he knew Boba Fett would be such a fan favorite, he would not have had him fly into the Sarlacc pit. Um, and I think the way to bring that back for him was to introduce Jango Fett and Boba Fett. Um, but uh, Jango Fett is just, I don't know. I, I think he's a good, I think he ended up being a good character, um, or a good enough character for what he was. Uh, but he was basically just a rehash of Boba Fett, which was a little disappointing, but that's what we have. So, um, I'm going to have to end it off there. Thank you guys so much for asking all your questions. This has been great. Um, I loved opening up the, uh, the Funko in case you missed it and you want to see really quickly what they are. Um, I'm going to show you really quickly. Uh, this is the pop that we got. It was R2-D2 with a serving tray, which is an awesome pop. Very cool. There you go. Um, we also got a plush Boba Fett. And here's the back. I don't think I showed the back. He's got a little jetpack. Very cool. And the viewfinder up here. And then we got a C-3PO uh, programmed for etiquette t uh, hat. Very cool. And actually, I didn't show this, but on the bottom there are Star Wars and Pop logos. Very cool. And the C-3PO um, stomach ring on the back, Pop logo on the side. And then we also got a Jabba the Hut with one T mug. So that's pretty awesome. Um, thank you guys so much for joining me in this unboxing and asking all these great questions. I hope to do this sometime soon. Uh, I'll probably do it at the next Funko uh, Pop unboxing in a couple months. But if you want to, if you want me to do this again sometime soon, um, I can do another Q and A, and uh, we can have fun there. And, and you guys can suggest other things. I mean, that, I I think that would be. Uh, I'd love to hear what you guys think and what you guys want um, in these live streams because I want to do as many of these as I can. So, anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, until we meet again in a galaxy far, far away, this has been Stargeek.